All right, a lot of people have asked me if I would show how these um, these small um, Super Jewel Ringer 2.0s are put together. And um, here's one I put together this afternoon, and I will show you how to do it. Um, take it apart. All right, the tape's off. Next step is gently, gently start to pry this open. What I do is I just tuck a screwdriver in here and start to pry it. This is usually kind of um, glued on and um, you want to be very gentle because this... Alright, after some wiggling and jiggling, kind of being gentle, um, got the E-Core taken apart. You can see why it's calling the E-Core. And um, here's the bobbin. Next step is we're going to take all these wrappings off. Okay, we're going to get all this fine wire off and we, we're just going to go ahead and cut the, um, the wires off the legs. All right, that's what the bobbin looks like. We've taken all the um, wire off, and I've just left four posts here. These just pull out if you want to pull them out. So I've just got four posts there in case I want to use them. So the next step is to uh, to wind the bobbin. All right, they make these little um, slots. If you can see those, I've tucked this beginning of the primary all the way down in that slot. So it's right next to the bobbin, as close as I can get it. Now I'm going to start to uh, make my turns around. Alright, I'm just going around by hand, trying to keep it square on the bobbin. Keep the turns right next to each other. And I don't do what labor sa uh, Laser Saber suggested with the uh, two wires because this is a small a small little e-core I just don't have room for that extra wire so I just don't do it so I'm just going to put one layer all the way across nice and tight so you can see what I've got so far I'm about to finish just have one more turn to go and it's done. Alright, that's with the strapping tape on it. And that's just a uh, 3M product. Alright, I can't use bell wire because this um, this e-core is so small, bell wire is just too too thick. So I'm going to use uh, 30 gauge magnet wire and we're going to try and get 160 turns on here. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to start again by laying this tight in there and wind the same direction. I went ahead and put 200 turns on because there's plenty of room with the 30 gauge. So um, what I've done is I've got my two starting wires here. That's the start of my primary, start of the secondary. It's the end of the primary, end of the secondary. Just slide in. Like so. Put this one in over here. And these are made so that they fit um, either way. There's no wrong or right. Okay, so that's all put together. I use this um, adhesive, it's Goop brand. And then actually, we need to tape that. By keeping this tight, it won't shatter. Sometimes you can hear a little click at the start up, but that's about it. Okay, we'll just go ahead and hook these wires up. Alright, so here's some parts ready to go. This is going to be our little bracket. We can hang that, hang that on a wall with the circuit mounted here. I'm going to show you that you can use this, um, this, um, 2N3055, I think it's a TIP. Okay, so we can use that. Okay, I've put a little piece of tape here and I've bent the, uh, the legs of the transistor up just for a little insurance. I like to use stranded wire, it's a little softer and easier to, to work with. You know, we can just hang this on the wall and uh, feed our light bulb. Okay, so I um, I went ahead and, and 
test hooked it up before I soldered everything together, but you can see transistors in there, it's heat sink to this little stand. Um, you want to make sure the base the base is connected to the start, the innermost part of the secondary. Okay. Now, Laser Saber does his circuit a little different than I do. So actually the positive is coming in on the start of the primary. And it's no big deal. I mean, it's just a flat layer of, of wire, but it just so happens in this one, the start of the primary is the positive lead. And the collector is hooked to the end of the primary. The end of the secondary then goes out to the bulb. I've got a 3 watt LED bulb here. And let's see if it works. You don't think I would have actually tested this before I filmed it. This is all live. Alright, so we're getting ready to test. We've got wires hooked up. Now, we've done everything wrong. We've, we've used a uh, scrap E-Core. I'm using the wrong transistor because I happen to have an old one sitting around. Um, we're not using the right wire. We're using some bell wire and some 30 gauge magnet wire. So we're doing a lot of things wrong here. And we will fire it up and see if it works. Alright. Uh, probably won't work, but let's just give it a try. Hey, hey, it works pretty good. Alright, I don't hear any noise either. That's weird. Alright, here's two bulbs. Very bright. You can see that's 24 watts. Those aren't meant for 24 watts. So we're pushing them too hard. You can hear it's ringing a little bit. Here's my original um, Super Jewel Ringer 2.0 that I made with telephone wire. I just didn't have any today. Um, we got the two bulbs lit. And this is really what you should be trying to draw. So this is uh, 300 milliamps. So that's a lot better. And that's because it's got fewer turns. I just I got excited and I put 200 turns on that I shouldn't have. And that's got the uh, larger 3055 transistor, but this one works uh, pretty nice too. Now these bulbs aren't quite as bright, obviously, but we're not drawn anywhere near the, the power. So there's one more thing I want to show you. Alright, 9 volt battery. Can we light these two LEDs with a 9 volt battery? Let's see. And there's a um, full jewel ringer running on 9 volts. Pretty cool. Classic jewel thief.